guess what, everybody? Russiagate has caused uh, more war. <laughs> Russiagate helped secure a dangerous arms deal. This is an article in truthig.com that was written by Max Blumenthal. It goes into the Ukrainian-Russian conflict, right? Uh, it talks about and this conflict, uh, which started in 2015 during Obama, uh, over 10,000 had fallen in the conflict and at least 1.4 million have been turned into refugees. Uh, it's now entering its fourth year. Um, a decision by the Trump administration virtually ensured that the news uh, from Donbas, Ukraine will grow dramatically worse. Last month, the State Department approved the transfer of 50 million worth of lethal weapons to the Ukrainian military. Along with a shipment of M107A1 uh, Barrett sniper rifles, the United States will be delivering 35 FGM Javelin anti-tank launching systems and 210 missiles. Oh, God. After meeting last June with House Majority Leader Paul Ryan and Senator John McCain, uh, Andriy Parubi, who is the Speaker of the Ukrainian Parliament and a veteran Nazi activist, presented the, the Javelins as a game changer. If we'd burned several hundred Russian tanks in 2015, it would have been an important step forward restoring peace in our country's east. Right? Brian Milikovsky, a Fulbright scholar who was working with an aid organization on the Ukrainian side of Donbass, told me the Javelins would provoke Russia to escalate its military involvement and dramatically deepen suffering on both sides. Right. This is, this is going to just bring an escalation. So all this Russia, 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 what happened? So um, Obama was actually... Uh, they were, they were, he was getting pressure to, to try to, to give these arms and to escalate the war between the Ukraine and Russia. And he said no, and he uh, refused the arms shipment and kept alive the Min Minsk II peace process and along with the prospect of UN peacekeepers deploying to Donbass, uh, a proposal endorsed by Russia. Well, this pissed off neoconservatives and uh, some anti-Russian liberals. But once the 2016 presidential campaign got underway, the bipartisan war party was confident its demands would be met. Once the Democratic and Republican conventions rolled around, both parties' draft platforms contained nearly identical language promising arms to Ukraine. The arms transfer had been a personal priority of Hillary Clinton, a top recipient of weapons industry cash since early 2015. Only hours after the Republican National Convention rang its opening bell, however, a Donald Trump foreign policy advisor named J.D. Gordon ordered the RNC to alter its pledge for lethal weapons to call for appropriate assistance to the Ukrainian military. Though Trump said later that he was unaware of the change, Gordon claimed the candidate had demanded it to confirm to conform to his state-supported uh, detente with Russia. Desperate for evidence of Trump-Russia collusion, Democrats latched onto the dossier produced by Christopher Steele, a former agent of Britain's MI5, who was funded by a law firm closely tied to Clinton and the Democratic National Committee. According to the air-laden dossier, the Trump team had agreed to sideline Russian intervention in Ukraine as a campaign issue in exchange for Russian promise to sabotage Clinton's campaign. The House in March, the House Intelligence Committee opened its investigation into allegations of Russian meddling into the U.S. election, ranking member uh, Representative Adam Schiff. Oh, he's a good guy, Adam Schiff. He zeroed in on the conspiracy, right? And he said... Um, now, is it possible to remove the Ukraine provision from the GOP platform as a coincidence? Huh? Wow. He then started the whole, shift, started the whole Russiagate thing, right? But here's this interesting thing about Schiff. And, he, and this Russia thing, you've also noticed, has gotten him onto the national spotlight. Nobody really knew who Schiff was. He's kind of, he was said here as a, uh, he was quoted by 
referred to by uh, one journalist as a milk toast moderate. All right. Um, so <laughs> now he's emerged as an unlikely face of democratic resistance to the new president, a liberal hero, according to Lee, uh, this reporter, uh, journalist, Ryan Lisa, there was more to Schiff's burgeoning obsession with Russia meddling than his own sense of vanity. However, since entering Congress in 2002, Schiff hasn't met a war he didn't like. He backed the invasion of Iraq. Oh, what? The Democrats, aren't they the peace party? Nope. Cheered on NATO's regime change operation in Libya. That was pushed by Sen uh, Secretary of State Clinton. Hardly endorsed the U.S.-Saudi war on Yemen, which is currently producing 130 uh, children deaths every day. 130 children die every day in Yemen as a result of what the United States is doing. It's backed by Democrat Schiff. Um, and he clamored for direct U.S. intervention in Syria and lent his signature on virtually every APAC-crafted resolution that has landed on his desk. The arms industry has rewarded Schiff handsomely, pumping over $70,000 into his coffers in 2016. Schiff's largest donor this past campaign cycle at 12,700 individuals plus PACs was Northrop Grunman and Raytheon, Right? The manufacturer of the Javelin anti-take missile system was close behind with $10,000 in contributions. Wow, look at this. Back in 2013, Schiff was treated to a $2,500 per head campaign fundraiser by Ukrainian-born, California-based arms merchant, Igor Pasternak. See? This is how it works, folks, right? It's unreal. In November 17, Schiff summoned J.D. Gordon, the former Trump campaign aide, to be interviewed by the House Intelligence Committee, citing House staffers political reported that Schiff was investigating whether Trump campaign officials made the Republican Party platform more friendly to Russia. Just, this is the madness that we're in. Wanting peace means you're a Russian puppet. Nobody gives a shit. And all these Rachel Maddow and all these other people clamoring for war, do you know? What it does then, people in the Ukraine with 1.4 uh, million refugees, and now you're going to give more, like, ugh, it's unreal to me, man. Everybody just war, 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 war. We're the most war culture. And everyone just, like, no one's even saying, wait a minute, war is awful. Whoa, whoa, no one's saying war awful. It's only, the only debate is how we go to war, what we spend on war, um, that's not even debatable, really. Just we're going to war. That's a foregone conclusion. Just how we go to war. That's the only thing that's sort of mildly debated. Because you don't see Noam Chomsky on CNN. You don't see, I mean, you know, Jill Stein got a little traction during the campaign, but, you know, she was, of course, treated like she was just some crazy hippie and now she's a Putin puppet. She had dinner with Putin. And it's, it's insane to me. In November... Just weeks before caving to the pressure to send the javelins to Kiev, Trump was widely ridiculed when he warned that people will die because of Russiagate. But in Donbass, where war-weary population lives on the brink of another bloodbath, the president could prove his critics wrong in a way they never imagined. Andrew Weiss, a Russian analyst on the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, told reporter John Hudson, overall, I see this discussion on the Trump-Russia collusion as fitting within a broader effort by people within the national security bureaucracy to box Trump in on Ukraine. See, it's all about war. Russia, 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 because we got to go to war. It's about spending, sending weapons to the Ukraine. It's about building up the nuclear arsenal because we're in, we're in another Cold War. It's all about this Russiagate is, and, and that neoliberals then jump on this bandwagon for the last year and a half is sickening to me. You call yourself a liberal, then you should be, for, you should be against war, right? Have you ever been around a war? Have you ever seen it? Do you know how many women and children get hurt? You know? It's just like, I'm just so sick of these neoliberals. And they'll champion some, some cause, but then they, they don't care that they're helping further more war and more of the American empire doing awful things. 
All those people, those rich celebrities, those one percenters at the Golden Globe wearing black, okay, giving women a voice who've been, you know, sexually abused, absolutely, absolutely. But then any, just everyone, we just want women, 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 that's it? That's the only issue that's facing this world? Well, if you really want to support women, why don't you stop backing this Russiagate bullshit that is actually killing a lot of women and children in the Ukraine because that's what war does. Everybody dies in a war, right? Men die, women die, children die, civilians die, people that don't want to be in the war die. That's what happens with the war. So why don't you focus on the bigger issues instead of watching a bunch of rich people wearing $30,000 to $40,000 in clothes and jewelry talk like they're, they're really doing, they're just doing the best work of everybody. It's kind of preposterous. So thanks for watching the show. Thanks for not being a neoliberal. And let's make Gotham great again. And let's end war. Why don't we try that?